before we begin. It's important that I emphasize that this video is entirely based on my opinion. And I have no way of knowing the true intention of the people or the countries mentioned in this video. So treat this video as my personal opinion and for educational purposes only. China is killing Africa with debt and colonizing it country by country. Close to the U.S. Much of the continent is now economically and politically aligned with the world's fastest emerging superpower, China. Chinese officials are eager to make China a superpower, and they're doing it with the help of an ancient Chinese Communist Party secret. Lots and lots of money. It's been spending billions of dollars transforming the infrastructure of an entire continent, building ever closer bonds. Everybody in the equation wins. Zambia wins, China wins. China has even placed its only overseas military base in Africa. The third world countries have a ton of pain points, as you can imagine. People are starving, undereducated, don't have clean running water, don't have electricity, and the people in power are often corrupt and just want more power and money. China touts the fact that their foreign investment and aid is no strings attached. Unlike other institutions that give low or no interest loans to developing countries like the International Monetary Fund or World Bank, China gives loans with no requirements on factors like respect of human rights or democratic elections. War and debt are exactly the same thing, except for one point, which is that nobody needs to occupy territory today. Even though African countries look to have become free from colonization, a whole new form of colonization has become evident in recent years. And it has been spearheaded by China. And most economies are calling this form the, the debt trap. Debt trap diplomacy. Debt trap. Debt trap diplomacy. Mission debt trap. Success. Debt trap. More of Africa finds itself in China's debt. China is saddling the partner countries with crippling debt. Saddling Africa with unsustainable debt. Sometimes the loans are repaid in natural resources. The Chinese Communist Party offers loans to needy governments. Those governments become dependent on Chinese money. Then, when they can't pay back the loans, Chinese companies take over key infrastructure. It's a growing amount. We don't know the conditions. And these countries are going to be increasingly leveraged to repay that. When they're unable, China will make additional demands. These countries will have less money to spend on social services and other programs. It's somewhat of a downward spiral. And the reason for this increasing debts from China is partly due to the need for African countries to end their dependency on the International Monetary Fund and the World Bank. These people tend to demand market liberalization in exchange for loans. But let's get back to the debt trap diplomacy being used by China to colonize Africa. China and Africa will join hands to build the China-Africa community with shared future that features win-win cooperation, happiness for all, and harmonious coexistence. The simple answer for why this is is because China has pumped huge amounts of money into the continent of Africa. They're buying allies. China is determined to implement the five knots to not interfere in countries in Africa exploring a development path which suits their own country's situation. You see, the country of China is running out of growth potential. Its era of double-digit year-over-year GDP growth is over as it makes the shift from industrializing ample. China built a $3.2 billion railway in Kenya trekking the 300 miles from Nairobi, the capital, to Mombasa, the second largest city and primary port, in 4 hours and 30 minutes. See, most people view foreign aid as a generous thing, like, wow, we're helping third world countries, that's so kind of us, honey. But for the most part, <laughs> but for the most part, humans, especially those in power, don't do things out of the kindness of their hearts without other motives at play.
Whereas one would argue out that China giving loans to African countries would help them in their development, these China loans can give China the leverage to write new rules, establish institutions that reflect Chinese interests, and can reshape the soft infrastructure such as the human capital, financial institutions, government offices, law enforcement, education, and among us others. In October 2018 speech, the U.S. Secretary of the State, Mike Pompey, said that China's loans are facilitated with the bribes. According to the senior U.S. government, government official, Beijing encourages dependency using opaque contracts that mire the nations in debt and undercut their sovereignty. In one report which analyzed 100 Chinese contracts, it revealed that the loans are structured to give an advantage over other creditors and allows action to be taken if the borrower acts contrary to the interests of a People's Republic of China entity. There are also unusual clauses that shroud agreements in secrecy. They say the goal for China's infrastructure, construction, and financing in other countries is the creation of an economic world order ultimately dominated by China, and that this poses a national security threat to the United States. This stands in stark contrast to China's approach, which encourages dependency, using opaque contracts, predatory loan practices, and corrupt deals that mire nations in debt and undercut their sovereignty denying them their long-term self-sustaining growth. Africa is establishing itself as the source of labor and resources for China, and so, until the West pays attention, Africa will continue inching forward on its path towards becoming China's China. Private Chinese industry is taking hold of Africa. Of the estimated 10,000 Chinese businesses in Africa, 90% of them are privately owned rather than one of the numerous Chinese state-run companies. The Chinese companies in Africa are actually making money, some substantially so. The Chinese government certainly has provided a considerable push to the industrialization of Africa, but now that that's done, economic forces are pushing the initiative further forward. I think, you know, we cannot be naive um, at this point in time. We've seen countries take on enormous amounts of debt. We've seen hugely inflated infrastructure projects, many of which, which are white elephants before the get-go. Well, it's been pretty good. Half of all low-income countries are at a high risk of defaulting on all their debt. That's a lot of leverage. And just like that, in one relatively swift move. You, sir, have just secured the bag for billions in profits. I think in some cases it's too late, and in some cases the dominoes are falling. In Zambia, you got a eurobond price at 70 cents in the dollar. If you follow the markets, that's telling you that basically Zambia's bust. Well, I think whenever you engage financially or economically with another country, you do actually interfere in, into like the, the political structure, the, you know, the economic structure, the power structure. So in that sense, any kind of engagement is a kind of a, a disturbing the status quo. He who goes aborrowing will definitely not be a happy man. Because the question is, is not whether you're borrowing or you're not borrowing. What is the capacity to pay back the loan? And depending on the size of the loan, for all intents and purposes, you virtually conquered a country without firing a single bullet. No dead soldiers, no potential retaliation, not that much bad press either. Report shows that African countries have rapidly increased their borrowing from China between 2000 and 2017, and an estimated 143 billion US dollars have been loaned by China to African countries and state owned enterprises. And these debts are shared by several. Afghan countries. Zambia can't afford to pay back its multi-billion dollar loans to China. And so there are secret talks going that Zambia is poised to hand over the Lusaka International Airport to China. That's in addition to all the Zambian copper, nickel, and cobalt mines that are already run by Chinese companies. China is coming for its pound of flesh in Uganda. Their Exim Bank lent $200 million to the Ugandan government. This money was used to expand the Entebbe airport. 
And if Uganda fails to repay the loan, China can take possession of the airport. The Republic of the Congo owes China $7.3 billion. China and Congo have launched projects worth several billion dollars. These include a motorway between Brazzaville and the economic capital of Pointe Noire, the construction of Brazzaville Stadium, a hydroelectric dam, and upgrades to the country's airport. According to a paper by the China Africa Research Initiative, the Republic of the Congo is one of three African countries, alongside Zambia and Djibouti. The Chinese have penetrated every sector, from mining to agriculture and even media. More than 80 Chinese companies operate in Zimbabwe. The 290-mile Nairobi-Mombasa railway is Kenya's biggest infrastructure project since the country became independent in 1964. Opposition parties say the project is too expensive, won't generate enough revenue, and is a ticking financial time bomb. Without traffic through the port, Sri Lanka realized it couldn't pay back its debt to China. So instead, it signed away the entire port with a 99-year lease. All revenues from the Entebbe Airport in Uganda, for example, are used to pay the Chinese lender who helped build it, before anyone else. Angola is repaying most of its loans by guaranteeing oil. In 2020, 61% of its oil exports went to China. The African country of Djibouti is home to China's first, but definitely not last, overseas military base. Despite all these evidences, there are several bodies that do deny the fact that China is using the debt to conquer or colonize Africa. A 2018 report released by the Center for Global Development said that between 2001 and 2017, China restructured and waived loan payments for 51 data nations, and they never seized any of their state assets, which was in contrary to what the media has been reporting. A senior Chinese official denied that his country was engaging in debt trap diplomacy. Chinese loan here is only about 10% of total loan from the international. For example, China is a, that the loan is major focusing on the infrastructure. But the Chinese embassy in Uganda says, which of the Chinese projects in Africa have been confiscated? None. The hype surrounding China's debt trap in Africa has no factual basis and is being pushed on malicious grounds. When the victim begins getting blamed for their action, then it is safe to conclude that the battle is far from getting won. But here is a question. When you are in a bad financial situation and I come to offer you a financial bailout with a few conditions, vague clauses, and without strict scrutiny, you are more likely going to take my offer regardless of the interest charged or other terms and conditions attached to the loan. And there it is. I have been avoiding this topic for so long because topics about politics is not really very acceptable within the YouTube. But because my country is equally affected by this China debt, I couldn't hold back and had to make out this video. So I hope you like it. So give it a thumb up so that it can spread to many people and make sure you subscribe to the channel. Put in your opinion in the comment section and I'll see you next time. Peace.